uh, actually, it's an officer Cosgrove that filed, that uh, was determined to have fired the fatal shot. Uh, so just, just no, I and that the, the the correction to be made, and I want to clarify that the attorney general did not say that he was not aware of which of the officers uh, were firing on Brian, Brian Taylor. The question was because only one of the shots was actually fatal. One of the six contributed immediately to their death. They said. They weren't able to determine which of those particular, um, as opposed to the other officer. But in and of itself, it was irrelevant to the overall win- inquiry, which is the most disturbing aspect of it. And that is the idea that because they found the officers justified in using lethal force, ultimately it did not matter to them, legally speaking, who delivered the fatal shot because they were justified in the use of force anyway. And so that's why it did not lead to a prosecution, they say. But you're right. They are able to determine which particular bullet, but in the idea of whether it was relevant legally to a prosecution, it was not. Um, and Neil, I want to... Uh, Jake, I, Jake I, can I, I, I say something real quick? Well, I want I, I want to I, I push back on something, or not push back, or just ask you about something and then, and then go on and, and, and make your point. But that is, I heard an interview with Congresswoman mm-hmm. Val Demings of Florida, former police chief, I believe from Orlando, or at least uh, the surrounding area, and she said that she does not support defunding the police because uh, the minor- minority communities are the ones who depend upon police uh, more than any other community and that diverting funds from police would end up hurting uh, minority communities, black and brown people. Um, this is obviously a, a black woman, a former police officer, a member of Congress, police a chief, a member of Congress, saying that. Uh, how does that square with what you said? So it's not just that simple. We're not just talking about taking money away from the police and doing nothing with it is what defunding the police sounds like. What we're talking about is divesting to invest, divestment, investing, investing in those things, those services, those needed services within our neighborhoods and communities, mental health, uh, nutrition, education, housing, dealing with our, our houseless population, the homeless population, and all those things that contribute to crime. If we want to solve crime long long term, improving public safety for the long term in this country, we've got to start shifting resources from public safety, from corrections, from policing, to those things within our community that Mm -hmm. I just talked about that work for improving the economic conditions, improving the health, the environmental health, and so on within those communities. That's what we're talking about here. So uh, Major Neil Franklin and Laura Coates, uh, stick around. I'm going to come right back to you, uh, and we're going to continue to cover what's going on in Louisville. Um, But I want to also note that uh, coming up from the wife of the Republican presidential nominee to endorsing Joe Biden for president, what a difference a decade makes. Cindy McCain will join us live to talk about her decision. Plus, we're continuing to follow the breaking news. Tense protests in Louisville. Demonstrators reacting to the charges in the Breonna Taylor case. We're going to squeeze in a quick break. Stay with us. A good podcast is all about telling a great story. When it's done well, a story grabs you and won't let go. With Ancestry, you can tell a great story too. The story of you. Who are you? Where did you come from? Who are your ancestors? Ancestry DNA gives you a variety of tools to find out. Here's how it works. Grab an Ancestry DNA kit and then start a free trial where you can access Ancestry's billions of records. It'll tell you which countries your family came from, but it often goes deeper than that, down to specific regions. It can uncover your ethnicity and bring your family history to life. You can trace your family's paths and find out how you got to where you are now. No other DNA test gives you this kind of experience and flexibility. Start exploring your family story today. Head to Ancestry.com slash the lead to get your Ancestry DNA kit. Uh, we are following breaking news. There is a chaotic scene unfolding in Louisville, Kentucky, where protesters are facing off with police after the announcement of some charges in the Brianna Taylor case for wanton endangerment, but not for manslaughter or murder of Breonna Taylor. We're going to have much more of that breaking news in just minutes, but I want to turn now to an unprecedented endorsement for Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. Cindy McCain, widow of the late Senator John McCain, is now backing Biden. Her endorsement comes 12 years after her husband was the Republican nominee for president. But now Mrs. McCain is rebuking the Republican Party's nominee, President Trump. She's 
joins us now. Uh, Cindy, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. I have to say, I've known you, you for I've known you for 21 years. I've covered you and your family over A two long time, yeah, <laughs> two two John McCain presidential campaigns. In 1999, if someone had told me that you would be endorsing a Democratic presidential candidate, I, I would not have believed them. <laughs> I, I certainly understand that. I wouldn't have believed it. So um, I'm just glad to be a part of this campaign and glad to be, uh, you know, uh, obviously uh, listening and being able to do, be helpful in, uh, within, this, uh, within this issue of, of electing Joe Biden. But let me say, if I may, first, um, I pray for the community of Louisville right now. This is a perfect example of why it's, it's so necessary to listen to our communities listen to people of color, of different people that are different, people that are the same. We have got to, we have to sit down now and really try to mend this. And Joe Biden's the one person that can do that. In announcing your endorse, endorsement of Biden, you wrote, quote, there's only one candidate in this race who stands up for our values as a nation, and that is Joe Biden. So what, what values are, are you talking about? Because obviously you're a longtime Republican. Uh, I know you disagree with Joe Biden mm-hmm. on a number of things. What, what values... Does he stand up for that you support? Well, integrity, uh, character, uh, courage, empathy, um, and you know things that, that make make a, a person a good president. Um, it, it's it's been uh, it's been for me it's been very tragic to watch this the year twenty twenty unfold for the obvious reasons, but also for the ones that aren't so obvious. And Joe, Joe is the one person that, as you know, worked across the aisle with my husband on num- numerous issues and, and did it civilly. They, there was no discourse or no, um, you know, hatred spewed. It was, he did it civilly and he did it with the respect of the people involved and, of course, respect for our country. And so Joe's the one person I know because I know him. I've known him for 40 years. I know he's the one that can do this and that, and that will do it. One of the things you've talked about when you in endorsing Biden is that you both have had sons who served in the military. Obviously, Bo Biden, his late son, served in the military. Mm-hmm. Uh, your sons, uh, Jack and Jimmy, uh, serve. Uh, none of the president's uh, children have served. And then, of course, there's that story in The Atlantic uh, where the president is said to have referred to those who have served as as, as uh, suckers. Um, what's your take on that? Is that? Did that factor into your decision? Well, it didn't help it. I mean, it, it uh, for, for obvious reasons, I do not believe that the young men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice are losers and suckers. And I do not believe my sons and all the other sons and daughters around the, the country are losers and suckers. I have to respect them and, 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 and want to uh, make sure that they're safe and secure. Uh, so it did. I, I did resent that a little bit. But that's why we need Joe, because Joe, Joe has walked the shoes of this. He's a blue star parent like I am. He, he understands the military and he understands the young men and women and the families, more importantly, that are sacrificing. President Trump is about to make another nomination to the Supreme Court. Uh, I have to say, I think that if your husband were still alive, and I obviously wish he were, uh, he would be supporting for voting for President Trump's nominee in all likelihood. What's your message to Republicans who say, look, I don't like everything the president does, but he appoints conservative judges and justices and they further the agenda. Mm -hmm. I believe in that's enough for me. Mm -hmm. Well, the people I'm hoping to reach out to are certainly uh, everyone across the board, but particularly women and women. I know many, many women are, are on the fence about they're not comfortable with everything uh, with everything that's going on right now, but they also am not sure they want to support uh, uh, Vice President Biden. I hope that they will follow me and listen to me and know that that stepping outside your comfort zone might be the right thing to do in this race. And so I'm hoping that I can can lead people, you know, to to help with a victory for Joe Biden in November. You said you're you're staying a Republican. You're not changing your registration. Are you concerned that the Trump presidency will do long lasting damage to the Republican Party? Well, I, I think there has been damage done, but I, I believe in the great spirit of the United States of America. And I think those things can be mended and healed. 
what what we what has been missing here is this div- divisive attitude towards right and wrong on Capitol Hill. Um, in many cases, nobody's right or wrong. It's just it's just a matter of opinion, and working together together civilly is the only way we can 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 handle this. Uh, I remember John as a young congressman uh, wor- working across the the aisle with Tip O'Neill, and t- and Tip, you know, they didn't agree on much of anything at all, but the two of them remained friends because they respected each other and believed that they were doing it for the good of the country, and you, that's the same with Joe Biden. You have a big Senate race in Arizona between Republican Senator Martha McSally. She was appointed to fill your husband's seat, mm-hmm. and former astronaut and husband of Gabby Giffords, Mark Kelly. Are you going to vote for Mark Kelly? I'm not uh, going to talk about that right now. I'm here to talk about about uh, Joe Biden. I wish both candidates well in and uh, in this race. I know it's a tense time, but I'm I'm here to, to to give you the reasons why I believe Mark or I believe Joe Biden uh, is the person to do to 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 that we should support and believe in for the next for the next four years. Last question for you, Cindy, because uh, uh, I know you have to go. In my last interview uh, with your husband, um, for whom you know I had I had great regard, uh, I asked him how we wa- how he wanted to be remembered. Um, take a listen. How do you want the American people to remember you? Uh, he served his country, and not always right. Made a lot of mistakes, made a lot of errors, but served his country. And I hope we could add honorably. I think that we can say honorably. Um, that's tough to tough to hear. Uh, do you um, do you see your speaking out as fulfilling and upholding your husband's legacy of serving your country regardless of party? Well, it's certainly his legacy, but more importantly, it's the, com- it's the legacy of this country. Um, we have we have for years and years and years have been able to work across party lines and and do what was right for the country. And that's what we're seeing not happening right now. You know, Joe and John, as I mentioned, would, you know, fight like cats and dogs sometimes on the floor, but they remained friends forever. And that's it, it, it's not a Republican issue. It's not a, a Democratic issue. It's an American issue. And that's why that's why I'm here, and that's what I believe John, you know, felt and believed about Joe. Cindy McCain, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We're following thank a you. tense situation in Kentucky, where police and protesters are facing off after today's grand jury decision in the Breonna Taylor case. We're going to go live to Louisville next. Stay with us. Breaking news right now in Louisville, Kentucky, a heated scene between protesters and law enforcement off and on. In the last few minutes, we have seen protesters taken into custody by police, demonstrators reacting to today's grand jury and Kentucky Attorney General decision in the Breonna Taylor case. Only one officer was charged, and that was for wanton endangerment, not for manslaughter or murder, as Breonna Taylor's family wanted. CNN's Shimon Brokubez is on the ground in Louisville. And Shimon, update us on, on what's unfolding there. We're looking at some older images from a few minutes ago that show some violence. But uh, have things calmed down a little? Yeah, they've calmed down significantly, Jake. As you can see, there are uh, just officers standing behind me in full riot gear. They've pushed us further uh, off the corner. We were down in the middle of the block. And now they've pushed most of us over to this area. And things are much quieter, certainly than they were just a few minutes ago. Uh, if you can see, I don't know if you can see, we were blocked by this car here, but the police were making several arrests. They were trying to load several of the people, that the, the protesters that they arrested into a, a van there. Uh, and now it's just, people have just been standing around. Police were able to move most of the protesters away. Some went up some of the side streets here, Jake, but we still don't know why police decided to move in on the protesters here. They had been war- marching and we've been reporting, uh, following them along for well over an hour. Uh, we don't know why police decided to block off the area here and to prevent them from walking and marching further. And that is when the confrontation uh, ensued. Uh, police moved in, made several arrests. Some of the protesters were throwing 
water bottles at the officers, and then some of the officers were firing those pepper balls uh, to try and disperse the crowd. But like